This story goes back to a telly of the 25 volunteers that started out in my group and the 15 that completed their service. Five of us were based in the Esteli region. Of the 16 departments in Nicaragua, a large number of volunteers were concentrated in the Esteli region. This is because some regions like the coast were extremely difficult to reach in an emergency and others were hostile. Female Peace Corps volunteers were discouraged from selecting Chinandiga to work in due to a cultural climate that was hostile towards females. One of my friends lived in a small community that was midway between Esteli and Genetega. The community's name was Numanji. She was about two hours away from either city by bus. To get to her bus stop, she had to walk about an hour and a half and cross a river, which would overflow in the winter and be impassable for weeks at a time. Due to the events that passed in her community, I am also going to refer to her by her nickname. Her community called her La Tita. Tita isn't actually a Spanish word, but a suffix thrown onto words to indicate something that is small or precious in combination with her name. For example, Pearl means dog, but Burrito, a means puppy or little dog. La Tita earned this title of the, the Little One due to her stature and cuteness. Despite this not being a competition, Travis Cumba is still a cooler nickname to have. La Tita came in with my group, and she lived about an hour away from me. Even now, when trying to describe her, the only words I can think of are laid back and cute. I must confess that I had a bit of a crush on her during training. I am in no way ashamed to admit that. My childish crush evolved into a friendship over time, and I am glad for that. She has the type of personality that can deal with any situation and face it in a relaxed and unruffled manner. Latita lived with the family in Nemanji for two months before moving out on her own. She used her savings from the $200 stipend we received every month to rent her own place. This was allowed, but she needed to get approval first and live in the community for three months. She liked the idea of living by herself, cooking her own meals, and being independent. It was about a week after moving to a small house that was about 20 by 20 feet that she began to get nightly visits. The first time it happened was late at night when the rest of her community had gone to bed. She told me it was about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. She was in her bed when she heard the sound of footsteps. They approached her door and paused for a few moments. She listened for a few seconds and then the person pushed on her door. The deadbolt clicked against the older Confirming it was locked, the person then walked away. Understandably, she was worried about that late night encounter. Someone had tried to enter her house late at night without her permission and was testing the door to see if it was locked or not. She had no clue what they wanted, but had a good idea. Unfortunately, the percentage for sexual harassment for female volunteers reported to be about 20% by the Peace Corps. Even more unfortunate is that that number is realistically closer to 99% as I have only met one female, male volunteer that wasn't verbally propositioned, harassed in the streets and in their community. She hoped that it was just a case of mistakenly walking up to the wrong house and trying to enter but this hope was trampled underfoot when the next night the men returned and tried to push open her door again. 
This time the footsteps circled around her house and tried the back door to her house as well. After finding both locked, the man left once again. Like most volunteers, Latita took to sleeping with the machete by her bed just in case someone would try to force his way into her house. These nightly visits occurred for two weeks before she broke down and called another volunteer to come and spend the night with her to try and catch the perpetrator in the act of trying to open her doors late at night. The other volunteer never heard or saw anyone, which made her even more distraught. She now knew that the man was watching her during the day and didn't try to enter her house because he knew that her friend was lying in wait for him. The friend stayed for a week, but the man never came any of the nights he was there. He eventually had to return to his community in Genetega, but he advised her to call the Peace Corps and report these incidents. Looking back, it seemed like a stupid decision not to report the activity. But if I had to guess at her reasons, I would say they stemmed from the fact that she had not received permission to move out into a new house and was worried about being kicked out of the Peace Corps. Stoicism seems to be a common trait among volunteers. I think some viewed it as being a tattletale. I viewed it as an insult. If I went to the higher-ups with every problem I faced, I would be admitting that I couldn't handle them myself. I dealt with my community counterpart stealing materials from my heaven building project by myself. Why involve bureaucracy in a situation that they probably couldn't even resolve? Latita instead opted to go and talk to her Nicaraguan grandfather whom she had lived with for two months and had built up a friendship with. She told him every detail. She told him how the person tried to enter her house every night and she was frightened for her safety. He wrapped an arm around her reassuringly and told her, everything is going to be all right. Later she saw him talking to a few guys in front of the shop that sold Guaro, which is Nicaraguan moonshine. She figured he was talking to whoever was bothering her and telling them to knock it off. The late night visits from the man stopped for a week and Latita started to relax and let down her guard. The man came back on the eighth night and tried to open her front door, back door, and tried to open her window. He tried to get into her house for the better part of an hour. She spent that night clutching her machete and didn't get a wink of sleep. I would love to end this story on a happy note about how the man lost interest in trying to sneak into her house at night and she eventually went on to do great work in her community. She did work up until she left, but she unfortunately quit after a year of being in the Peace Corps. If I had to hazard a guess, I would assume Matita quit not because of the man visiting her house on an almost nightly basis, but because she found out who it was. She eventually caved and told the Peace Corps, but there wasn't much they could do other than offer to place her in another community. She chose to stay and put up with that man for nearly two more months before calling it quits. Latita had caught him a few weeks before she left. She had waited for him to come and try to open her door. The instant he pushed on the door, she pulled it open and met him on the front step with a machete in hand. He stood there with a shocked expression, and she returned the look. The man who had been trying to break into her house for over six months was none other than her Nicaraguan grandfather whom she had confided in and asked for help when she felt like she had nowhere else to turn. This was the same man who listened to her fear and concerns about this intruder 
who had looked her in the eyes, wrapped his arm around her reassuringly and told her, everything is going to be all right. <laughs>